Hello. I was asked to explain why the alphabetic character, the W, is so pronounced and yet the symbol looks like a double V. Thank you Steve for the question. It ties in, which I shall come on to in a little while, with the pyramid and the inverted pyramid. So let's look at the letter W. Why is it expressed as a double U and yet symbolically it is represented as a double V? If we flip it over the other way, its mirror counterpart is the M. And of course, a well-known corporate symbol, the golden arches, it's a has more of a curve to it. Now if you overlay or mirror the M with a, a W with curves, you actually get, hopefully you can see it on here, you get a loop and almost like two X's on the outside. It sort of in a way, references the sides of the Great Pyramid. The four sides are actually eight, because there's a slight indentation. But, it depends how you write a W. Do you do it with straight vertical lines, or do you splay them out? Same with the M. But interestingly, if you overlay them, you get what is basically a schematic of the optic nerve. It points to being looking for something right in the middle, the whole point of everything. Now if we look at the symbols the other way up, you see what you get here is two X's, but they also form a diamond in the middle. The W is a, I have suggested, is a magical symbol and its counterpart, the letter M, which you could hear in the word like empowerment, empowerment. And power is described as a measurement, as a what. Now think of the way you can spell what. W H A T when you're asking a question what is this what is this realm that we are in if you pierce the veil in this particular case you remove the W you're left with hat which is where it's at if you spell it W A double T but taking off the W again it reveals something within that. But then what if we look at its counterpart, what is mine? So if we take the M away from mine, we're left with Ein, which in German is one, which if we re rearrange the I-N-E to E-I-N, it references one. It also references in energy. It's all pointing to something right in the middle the pineal gland. If you think of, if you take the uh, alphabetic character, the eighth character, the capital H, the H, and you stack them one on top of the other, you've basically got the symbol of a ladder, referencing Jacob's ladder that goes to pineal. But it's a very interesting symbol. I've featured it on a video before. So you can see in this you've got your vertical pyramid, if this is like representing the earth line, and then below you have the inverted pyramid. And through making the video on and talking about the inverted pyramid, Niven, check out his channel um, and what he shows with the stepwell pyramid. And it became apparent from that, whereas 
let's take the Great Pyramid of Giza, for example, you have hidden chambers. So you have empty spaces that are concealed in solid matter. But when we turn to the Stepwell Pyramid, the opposite is true. The chambers are actually towers or little rooms built up on towers, which would be chambers, but they can be clearly seen because there is nothing hidden with an inverted pyramid. Just uh, a few thoughts that have come from all of this and seeing also the beauty in the timing, uh, being asked the question about why is it W and yet Expre expressed as a written character as a double V which I haven't actually answered have I so we do that now so we take the W using these lines here you'll notice you ho you have two downward points as it were and one upward Again, it's coming back to the, the, the taking the middle path, the ascension. So the downward, in this material reality, I'm sure you will have some perception of news stories, for example, uh, anything in the media, and even on social media. A lot of it is negative state, and it is trying to pull you down. But down is up in, when you're in an upside-down world. Think of it as the angel and the demon on the shoulder, shoulders. You have to overcome them. So you could see the angel and the demon as being these two things that are trying to pull you down to rock bottom. And between the two, when you find the discernment, the balance between the two, you have that internal ascension, that upward movement. Now if we look at the M using these lines here, you have its mirror opposite. You have two ascending and one descending. The Divine Masculine is represented as the outward seeking um, the hunter, the gatherer and so on that brings things back. So. In the sense of the M, the, the angel and demon are trying to sort of raise you up, as it were. But in order to do that requires the inner work. So taking the M off of mine and going in and going down to find that rock bottom. You could also see, Especially with a W, if you were to write three W's, as in WWW, World Wide Web, how it would resemble a saw, the teeth on a saw. So it's like cutting through the veil in the mental. So the double U is the two aspects of yourself, the one that judges things as good, the one that judges things as bad. The center point is to rise above those. So you start with the Divine Masculine, the outward seeking, but you turn it inward. By going down with the Divine Masculine, you're also creating a, a balance inside yourself because you're going down to find the deepest, darkest secrets of your shadow side, as it were. The Dark Knight of the Soul is another expression of it. Because when you have found that solid foundation, that's when you can rise and bring into play the Divine Feminine, which is expressed in the letter W, the W, that that pulls you down, recognizing the duality aspects of yourself in this realm or, si or simulation that is a perception of duality, of contrast, which you need to be able to discern and find the balance between the two. That allows that upward pyramid in the center of the W. 
So I hope that has clarified the significance of the symbol, why it is pronounced as a double U but is written as a double V. It's, a, it's an expression, it's a symbol of cutting through the veil like a, a saw, which is basically an M or a W if you put, were to string them out on a line it would start to resemble the razor edge of a saw that cuts through the veil to find that centre path inside yourself. Whilst you are on a linear plane, the spiritual journey is very much about the alignment in the vertical, but also finding the balance, which is where you get the crux, the eye fiction, the crucifixion. Because you're looking for that center point. The belief systems are, your, are the cross, but I am very much of the idea that we do get a new garment when the time is right. And it, these are just poor substitutes, carbon copies in a carbon copy world, you could say. But I thought there's a few interesting things that we can bring into this and I'm going to carry on this theme about the M and the W in the next video but just try it with different words if you take the word mine you take the M off and you're left with in and energy the what is a hat the where becomes here and so on. A wonder is still a wonder without the W. If you think of the way you spell the word or the number one, O-N-E, and yet there is a silent W on that one. That's another thing with uh, the beauty of language what it can reveal in the etymology and by just playing with these things removing letters another one would be R or Ra if you take the R out of iron you still have ion but look at the way or listen to the way the the R is pronounced listen to the way the R is pronounced in a word like car or trying to think of another example now or care where is that R sound gone it's transmuted because of a spell that it's within but language particularly English is a symbolic representation it's like a shorthand glyph effectively and they do reveal a lot of things. They are another little clue for ourselves to find the oneness inside oneself. So I, th I, th I feel we'll leave that there and I'm going to focus on an actor in the next video. A sort of life review, which I may prelude with just a few thoughts on tarot cards and astrology and why they may or may not work in either case, why they may not seem relevant and what they also possibly reveal. So we'll hold that whole topic off because it is a separate topic. So hopefully that has given you a new perception on the way to look at letters within words. They are symbolic glyphs after all. Of course we're not taught that, but it becomes apparent when you start comparing words. Why is there two spellings of there? As in over there or that that belongs to them, it's theirs, or an abbreviation of they are. Another very interesting uh, sort of urban myth is that uh, from an outside perspective 
if English isn't what your first language, there is a perception that you have to learn it perfectly. And yet, the truth of it is that most people who are where English is their first language really don't understand it and often use the wrong spelling in words. And I've seen this on billboards, I've seen this uh, on chalkboards and things. And of course, advertising takes it a step further with deliberate um, spelling of words in certain ways, which wouldn't be acceptable in, say, a story. But there's all, there's power in symbols, and there's a lot revealed in symbols, not forgetting, of course, numbers as well as letters which are known as characters another very interesting point i feel another big clue if we have the discernment to cut through those layers of the veil now i'm going to say as always unconditional love to you all